absolute monster. So let's get closer and check this thing out. Look at that. It's a hybrid. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the basement. Today we're checking out this Vision Line Jivo from Lionel. Now, I should clarify, this is not mine. This was dropped off by a buddy of mine named Travis. Travis is with the Lower Susquehanna Valley Modular Club. He and my buddy John were over a couple weeks ago and Travis brought this to run on the layout. He doesn't have a layout at his house right now. So he's like, might as well stay here and let you enjoy it. So we're gonna highlight it here on the channel today. This is an item that is actually on my wish list, specifically, not just the fact that this is the Vision Line model, but specifically a Canadian Pacific ES44. I don't think Lionel's come out with this scheme since this Vision Line model came out many, many years ago. And so it's definitely something that I would love to acquire at some point in time, but I'm glad that I've got this to be able to play with today. So it's got these cool lights that are probably distracting you. It's awesome. There's tons of features packed into this thing and boy, is it heavy? We're gonna compare it with one of the new AS44s so we can look at how much the weight difference is. This has over four pounds of pulling power, I believe. It is an absolute monster. So let's get closer and check this thing out. Look at that. It's a hybrid. All right, let's dive in and get a little bit of a closer look at this thing. Now this is, this is not coming from the original owner of this model. In fact, there are some issues with it on the inside, a rectifier issue. Travis was able to uncover that. This thing had been going back and forth to Lionel quite a few times based on all the stickers on the shipping box. But this is a fantastic model. Now this model was released back in 2009 in the volume two catalog. It is, it was cataloged with a few other road names as well, including the GE hybrid, the, the green and blue scheme. So the, like the builders unit as well, which is a pretty neat one that you've probably seen before. So the gist from, from this is that General Electric introduced the Evolution Series in 2005. They were basically the most fuel efficient, environmentally compatible diesel locomotives in history. They, they created a hybrid version the, of the ES44AC Evolution Hybrid, which is a one of a kind prototype. That was the Eco Imagination team put out. And that was the, the green and blue offering that you saw that Lionel put out. So how does it work? Well. Basically, it's capturing energy just like any hybrid does. During braking, it's going to store and replenish some batteries. And that's all going to be indicated by the charging lights on the bottom of the locomotive, which is pretty neat. So when the, the engine is moving and it's, it's using power, then you're going to see the lights coming from the center and going outwards towards the front or towards the rear of the, of the locomotive to indicate that power is coming out of the batteries. When it's gliding or coasting, the lights go from the front or the rear into the battery or into the fuel tank, if you will, to indicate that it's gaining power back or recharging those batteries. Those are really, really neat. And that really makes these things, these models stand out. Now, this is a fully die cast model. So the detailing is absolutely su like superb. It's got lots of separately applied details and we'll get a closer look at that as well. There's opening doors and some hidden hidden details. We can actually take the roof off and look inside the cab. Those cab gauges are illuminated as well, which is really, really neat. It's got that decorated cab. It's got die cast trucks, pilot and fuel tank. It has a metal frame. And like I said, boy, is it heavy. This thing also has a really neat feature where as the RPMs ramp up, the smoke output increases or decreases as well. So when you go to ramp up speed and the RPMs increase, you'll get a big plume of smoke puffs out of the exhaust and then it will level off shortly thereafter now that is only available in this model and that's a, one you know point that i want to make that code is already written for that feature to happen we should have that in every es44 in my opinion it is a really really neat feature that i think kind of kind of flies under the radar there's also spinning fans up here as well they kick on for when, once you get to a certain speed and then they will run for a certain speed after you slow down to kind of cool the engine down so those spinning fans are really cool they spin so fast it's actually really hard to see them spinning but let's go ahead and dive in this thing also does have a plow we've removed it for this video but there is a plow that comes with the canadian national version as well 
We've got some opening doors. So this front door here is gonna open up. We're gonna get some closer looks and see what all those little nooks and crannies have to offer. So we're in the engine facility here. If we open up this front door, we've got some legible, legible pieces in here. It looks like we've got fuses and I can't read that, but it is, there's a, looks like there's a fire extinguisher kit in there. It says open with, ca with caution on the door. So lots of detailing just right there at the very front of this locomotive. If we come over here to the side and I swing you around, try not to give you a headache. We've got some doors that actually open up as well here on the side of the locomotive. So let's pop, there we go. So we can pop those open and you can see some detailing in there as well. Again, all legible warnings and things like that. So this can pop back up. Let's take a dive here under the cab hood. So this just pops right off here. Some little clips, a board there for the number boards that light up. When you come in here and look down inside, you can see not only do we have the hand painted crew figures, but we've got lots of details on the cab interior. We've got the boards in the back there, some lockers it looks like, fire extinguisher, and then the control panels light up, which is super cool if I can get that to focus for you. So you've got some throttle knobs or horns it looks like there. Down here in the front, you can see he's got two screens. If I come through the window, you can see those screens lit up there for our engineer inside this locomotive. So really, really neat details that they've been, they did on these vision lines, these early vision line diesels, just like they did for the Genset switcher. It was the same way where they had the detailed cab interior. So I just stick this back on here and then put it back into place. There we go, just like that. While we have this thing on here, you can see where the lights are going. Now, if we ramp up the RPMs on the remote, see that big poof, that big plume pops out, and then that smoke will level off over time. If you let it idle, you just saw the smoke completely goes off as it's a hybrid. Now, see the smoke kind of tones itself back a little bit as well. We can bring the RPMs back down as well. You'll see the lights are coming out from the battery pack there. We're out from the fuel fuel tank to indicate that it is using power currently. And then up on top, we've got those spinning lights, or excuse me, up on top here, we've got the fans. And once we get to a certain speed step, those fans will kick on. There we go. So we saw them kick on there. Once we, get, once we ramp up the RPMs, those fans turn on, the RPM down. They're going to stay on for a minute or so, or a couple extra seconds, and then they'll turn off. Pretty neat. So we're going to let this thing come on out here. We'll put momentum at high, so then we can watch these lights. And then as we bring it down to coast, see how the lights change, and then they go back into the fuel tank. Now this is really visible when you have momentum high, so it's going to do a lot more gliding when you've throttled down. Pretty neat. So as I said, this one is die cast. These Vision Line Evos were die cast. They had to change the tooling to make them plastic, so we will probably never see these again, but they do weigh a lot. So let's break out the scale and compare it to one of my other ES44s. All right, so we've got this set for pounds and ounces, and we're gonna put, uh, this is gonna be my other ES44. So five pounds, 11.2 ounces. This is the standard ES44. Let's grab the Vision Line one and see how much it weighs. All right, let's see. 9 pounds, 2.3, 2.5 ounces. So this thing is 4 pounds heavier than the other one. It is an absolute monster. All right, everyone. So that's it for the review on this one. Let's run this thing around the layout. It is going to be pulling some modern freight, some stack cars, and some giant box cars as well. And it's we're going to leave it alone. Let's let this thing pull that giant freight train itself. And I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button. Hit subscribe. We appreciate you guys getting this far on this one. This is an awesome model. Hopefully one day I'll be able to add it to my collection. But I do have a feeling we might see some Canadian Pacific ES44s in the future. Time will tell. Have a great day, guys.
860. Are we still clear all the way? Over. Yes, 9860. The track is clear. Over. Thank you. 9860 out. Yes, 9860, the track is clear.